Ryan, what desired outcomes are top of mind when it comes to the energy industry's clean energy transition movement? Excellent. Um, I mean, top of mind for me is really how we approach these issues, you know, and the resolution to them with, with speed, you know, with efficiency, um, and really the urgency that, you know, we're seeing in society today, you know, in surrounding all the activities that we're seeing with the impeding storms, the resilience issues, you know, kind of the natural impacts that we're seeing in this, um, you know, kind of underpinning the drive for this transition. Um, we're seeing again here at ETS this week, you know, there's a lot of innovative solutions, you know, a lot of fantastic companies and a, and a strong desire to really move the market forward to be able to embrace and, and be successful in the clean energy transition. Um, but it's one of those issues where, you know, we have, you know, ex existential timelines and, you know, the necessity for us to be able to be successful, you know, meet the targets the, that, that we've set out for ourselves as an industry and as, as a group of individual utilities um, are significant. And, you know, we have to really be diligent about how we approach those. Um, I think we need to be conscientious and mindful of the process, the way that we think about it. Um, I, I liken it often to, um, you know, we can't be reliant on the same methodologies and thought processes that got us to the place that we are today to be the same underpinning processes that get us out. Um, and I think we've got to really be creative, um, you know, and think holistically about how we move ourselves forward, you know, with an ambition and, you know, a set of time expectations that, you know, our traditional approaches as utilities and as partners to the utility market as Enterix is, um, you know, haven't historically necessarily driven that, came, that same kind of timeline and urgency. Um, but it's great to see the excitement here again at this event, um, you know, as kind of the hallmark about how we identify those solutions and put together all of the innovators with the utility thought leaders to help us put the best foot forward to be able to meet those ambitious goals. Uh, can you describe the, the vital role that uh, private wireless broadband plays in uh, addressing these outcomes? Absolutely. Um, paint the broad landscape of kind of the types of solutions that we're talking about in the clean energy transition. You know, you think about renewables, distributed energy assets. Um, we're thinking about devices and, um, and sources of power and consumers you know, that are largely more distributed across the grid than they ever have been historically. The, the solution set that we see, all the innovators and the innovative companies that are out there, the, the underpinning capabilities necessary are digital. You know? And so I think a lot about digital you know, and digitization you know, in the conversations that underpin the needs for communications. Um, all of these devices have data, they're control points, you know, they require some level of connectivity between the device or the renewable um, asset and potentially the cloud or a piece of software in the data center. And it just stresses the importance of how critical it is that we could make a seamless, um, you know, near real-time flow of that information and control available to all of these disparate assets that are going to be being, being built on the grid. And so the whole concept of, of digitalization, I feel like, is really coming to the forefront once again. You know, it was, it was there as an industry for a while. Um, but today, probably even more imperative than ever it has been before, um, because frankly, without that kind of real-time visibility, that kind of control all the way out to the grid edge, you know, not just to the substation anymore. Um, I think we're going to have a hard time, you know, embracing, you know, a lot of the, the new digital distributed assets that are being, that are being deployed in the utilities networks um, and doing it in a way that doesn't compromise resiliency or reliability, but in turn, the converse, you know, really doing it with the mind's eye to improving every attribute of the grid operation while we're going through it. Um, and that can be achieved, you know, with, with the broadband communication systems that are out there in the industry today, um, that we're working across the entire industry to be able to help them understand, um, you know, to deploy and support. You know, it's really going to be a strong foundation for them to, you know, set the stage for the types of digital capabilities that they need to be successful with this transition. Excellent.
Um, so ETS 23's theme on its 10-year <clears throat> anniversary is uh, Keep Earth Weird. So when, when, when you read that, when you hear that, what, what does that mean to you? <laughs> Uh, I love weird. Um, weird, weird to me. You know, it just reeks of creativity, and you know, creativity. I, I really see as kind of a hallmark. You know, of, of innovation. You know, and how we need to embrace as an industry. Um, you know, the modern challenges that we see. Um, so I think it's a great moniker, not just for the event, but for us to think about. You know, how to challenge ourselves. You know, how to how to be innovative. You know, challenge the status quo. And it comes back to all those points that I said earlier. Um, we need to approach this problem differently, you know, than the methods and the way that we've approached building the grid for, you know, the last 50, 60 years. And, you know, that's a challenge, you know, for, um, you know, for this industry where, you know, risk and reliability and the types of decisions that we got to make as an industry need to be the right ones. We can't get this wrong. And, you know, we need to really be constructive and collaborative as an industry for us to be able to face that challenge. Um, but I can't think of any way better than an innovation model um, to be able to put the put the technologies that are available to the test, um, you know, drive them out into the field. And I do believe, you know, with the type of ing ingenuity um, and innovation that we have in the global energy market and the supply chain today, we will have the right toolkit in time. Um, and by collaborating, bringing everybody together, we'll be able to successfully see it out there in the field. Uh, so, so, Ryan, what's something that uh, nobody knows about you, at least nobody here would. <laughs> um, well, this isn't something that not anybody knows. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are surprised to find um, or intrigued to find that, you know, I've originally um, came from Canada and, you know, I started my career um, with an energy utility up in Canada and was fortunate enough to, um, you know, come down for an opportunity in the Silicon Valley to really learn innovation, to be able to learn the capabilities and what the art of the possible is with technology. Um, not different to the U.S., obviously Canada is faced with the similar challenges that we're seeing in the energy um, you know, transition. Um, we have, you know, obviously in Canada, a very strong supply of hydroelectric power, um, you know, which is inherently clean, you know, putting us at an advantage in terms of generating um, you know, energy in a renewable way that's quite um, powerful and capable for, for a big part of the North, um, um, the North American supply. Um, but it's been fun being able to tell the stories around, even though it's our, our, our favorite neighbor to the north, um, you know, there's a lot of great similarities, but there's a lot of differences that I love talking to folks about um, in terms of what I learned growing up in, in Canada.